Anyhow, this video is for 1984 Chevy Scottsdale. He messaged me the other day asking me if I could make a video about my 94 Chevy truck's fuel delivery system. My Chevy truck, 1994 Chevy pickup truck with the 4.3 V6, uses one of GM's earlier fuel delivery systems, a TBI system, a throttle body injection which is located right under the air cleaner housing. So I'm going to take that off now and then show you. And that's it in all of its glory. I have two injectors, one for each bank of the engine. The TBI system in my truck, the throttle body injection, fuel delivery system in my truck, is pretty straightforward and simple. This is how it works, okay? Here are all the main components too. You got your gas tank. Inside the gas tank is two things. Your gas pump, of course, and then the gasoline. Well, the gas pump pumps up the gasoline from the gas tank through a metal line, yeah. In this case, it's gonna be a rubber line because we had some fuel work done on this truck on the cheap side. Anyway, it pumps it up through a metal rubber line, whatever you have, to a fuel filter. The fuel filter is mounted on the bottom of the cab driver's side in like a nylon bracket. Just a, oh, it's about four inches long, maybe two and a half, three inches wide and fuel goes in one end and comes out the other. Usually it, it has an error on it, which way is which, so you don't accidentally put it in backwards or something, because that would be disastrous. Anyway, fuel comes up from the fuel filter to the engine, the throttle body injectors. And then the throttle body injectors are little solenoids that are energized by the PCM that are told to open or close. Well, when they close, there's fuel in them, obviously. When they open, a little pintle valve or ball or whatever you want to call it opens up and sprays fuel on the throttle plate at a 45 degree angle. Well, when the truck is just idling, the throttle plate, throttle plate, the throttle plate is closed and fuel gets sucked around the throttle plate into the engine where it is burned and then put out the exhaust pipe. And of course, if you have an injector go bad, your engine is either going to run like crap or it's not even going to run at all. Because if an injector goes bad on TBI system, half your engine is starving for fuel. And I don't know how well you all can see this, but there's a throttle plate right there. And sometimes some smoke comes out. I'll see if I can get some footage of that. Anyway, fuel comes up through this guy right here and then is delivered to each injector. This is the... Well, let's see here. This is the 246 injector, and then this is the 135 injector there. And real closely, you can see the wires for the injectors, and you can see the kind of effect that the gasoline itself, and then all the additives in the gasoline, have had on everything inside that throttle body injector. You can see how it's all kind of discolored and all. Also, don't do what I'm about to do unless you know what you're doing. Because, A, running your engine without an air cleaner, a scoomba, isn't good. Your engine can suck dirt in and score the cylinder and mess up valves and whatever else. And also, running your engine without that collet on there allows unburned hydrocarbons back out into the atmosphere instead of going back into the engine to be reburned. So, don't do what I'm about to do because it's, it's not good. if we can get some smoke. Oh yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. And when you're running your engine and you're, you're around here poking around under hood, be careful of any moving parts because that belt can grab a jacket sleeve if it's loose or long hair. It can get grabbed in by the 17 belt. Oh, your fingers can get wrapped around there. I've never had that happen to me, but I'd imagine it'd be pretty damn painful. Anyway, 
just be careful when you uh, say is just be careful and keep caution in mind when you're around here poking around because you can get shocked you can get cut you can get hurt burned whole mess of things to also check your air filter oh, well. all right Ugh, smells like gasoline it's a ring watch out for the ring anyhow that's my air filter and just inspect it there are several ways you can do it you can hold it up to the non-existent sun because it's hiding behind clouds or my favorite trick is you can take a shop light put the shop light on the inside of the air filter and then look in from the outside of the air filter and see if you see a lot of dirt between all the pleats filter checks your, checks your inspection put it back together and slap it all down if it doesn't you can go to your local auto supply house and a new air filter is anywhere from 8 to 10 bucks, maybe a little more, depending on what part of the country you're in, what part of the United States you're in, or a country overseas. Anyway, line up the two screws to go through the top of the air cover, hopefully keeping everything aligned and happy. And that's one. Can we do two? Yes, we got two. And then you have your little thumb screws that go on. Don't overstrip these and don't put them down so crank and tight that you gotta go get a monkey wrench to undo them. Just put them on a little past snug. I was gonna say finger tight, but I don't want it coming off when I'm chasing the hostess truck around town. And don't cross thread it either, because then you won't be too happy.